Jared Cannonier by KO or TKO is five to one. Jared Cannonier by submission is seventeen to one odds. Are either of those bets live? I feel like the KO is at five to one. At five to one, I think the only way he he could get a KO is if he just gets his ass beat for two rounds and then as he gets tired and, and really. <laughs> To me, I feel like he gets him dry. Like if, if he's gonna get the KO, it's yeah. like hits him clean, wow. hits him clean yeah. dry, and like the, the first through, like yeah, the first Before like thirty seconds, matrix, right? yeah, starts downloading him. I I like that uh, early. KO All right, well then let's look at this. If we, I mean, if we're if we're, a, if we're asking like if any of those bets are live, if, if there's any money to be placed on a on a Jared Cannonier finish, I think it's a very early KO, in my opinion. Jared Cannonier to win in one in rounds one or two is nine to one. And we're here live from West Palm Beach, Florida, slapping Vigs with my boy PD Tree, Pat Downey, and yours truly, Violent Bob Ross, Luis Pena. Our host for the day, Matt Tanner, starting us off. We're going to talk some UFC, some Bellator. We're going to give you guys the greatest picks so you can slap your bookie's head. <laughs> that was hell of a lot better of an intro than I could have ever done. Oh, my man was bred for that. <laughs> I'm telling you, dog. I'm bred. I'm bred for the radio boys. He's a like natural. Bruce. He's a natural. When, when Bruce <laughs> retires, yeah, I need yeah, them Bruce. to hit me up. Hey, hey, you don't need Bruce to announce it. You're back in the UFC. You just cut your. <laughs> Bro, I hit him with the Mr. Kennedy. Give me the mic. I hit him with the Mr. Kennedy. Have the mic <laughs> drop into my hand as I do it. That'd be great. Lord. You got to be a real mark to know who that is. Ooh. Let's get started. Let's dive right into UFC 276. So, originally, one of the fights we, I was really looking forward to, Bobby Green versus Jim Miller. Now, all of a sudden, I just literally pulled up my phone 10 minutes ago and saw on Instagram that Bobby Green is out. Who's replacing him for Jim Miller? Donald, C Cowboy Cerrone, it was. What do you guys think about this fight? Who you like here? The odds are not even out yet. That's how recent it was. Yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that they're going to have Bobby Green was minus 335 favorite. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Cowboy's going to be a minus 200 favorite. That's my guess. And I could be dead wrong on this, but who you guys liking this matchup? As far as your prediction for the, uh, the odds, man, that's hard to say because, you know, these bookies, when, they, when a guy steps up on short notice, they like to make him the underdog just because he is stepping up. But then again, Cowboy's coming off a camp. Um, he did just cut weight recently to make fifty five. Like what was that last week? Where the the which Jim on? Miller coming off of? Career wise, um, I think L's wins. No, I think I think of. Jim Miller's coming off a dub, a couple of dubs. I, I I would have to agree with Matt. He's gonna be the, he's gonna be the favorite. You sure. think Cowboy's gonna be the favorite? No. Nah, you think no? Nah, I don't think definitely. Jim Miller's gonna be the favorite here. No. 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 You. That's what. That's what I was saying. Oh, you're saying. Okay. I think. I think Miller might be the favorite because he's coming off. I think. I'm pretty sure Jim Miller's coming off some dubs. He's just coming off a win against Nico Mata. I'm agreeing Mata. with you then. They're going Nico to Mata. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that fight because yeah. uh, I, I happen to know someone that knows him pretty well, and uh, they were talking about that for a minute. But yeah. No. Um. So Cowboy could be the favorite. You think Cowboys? Is, I don't know, man. I think Miller. I right, think, let, let's say for all intents and purposes, this fight's a pick 'em. Regardless, who you guys like in this I fight? Still like Do Jim you, Miller. You like Jim Miller? Coming off wins, man. And to your point before, when we bet against Cowboy on that, uh, who was it, Munoz or? Yeah. Miller? So well, this is a while back. I told Pat. I said I'm taking Alex Morono. I had him on the money line, on a knockout, and on a first round knockout. Sick I hit all pick. three bets against Sick. Cowboy, and Cowboy's coming off that loss against McGregor. He hasn't looked the same. He's talked about how he kind of gave up in that fight. So do you guys feel like, and honestly, I think Jim Miller is going to be plus money here. Do you feel like Jim Miller is a live underdog on this card, if that's the case? Whether he's a dog or not, I know I'm going with him for the same logic as you gave for why you made that bet earlier. With I Marona. think Cowboy's just a guy yeah, against Moreno. I, I wasn't too uh, intelligent or educated on Moreno, but I don't know if you were either, but we both kind of thought the same. Like, Cowboy is at that point where, for me personally, as a kid growing up, it's almost hard watching them get in there every time as a fan because it's like. Think he needs to hang it up? Maybe he's just done. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Jim Miller's the most talented either, but I think. That's my pick against against uh, Cowboys stepping in. What do you think? Man, I think you guys are Sleeping counting. Count, you guys are counting the boy out, boy. 
<laughs> I like it. The way I look at okay. it. So, yeah, you got a cowboy who is on the tail end of his career, obviously. He said that he's got two more in him. I'm thinking that someone that says, yo, I'm looking at two more fights, they're going to have they're going to approach their their uh, game a little bit more intensely than they, they were the last couple of fights. Let's, let's be real. Cowboy is on a fi- uh, five fight losing streak. He's looking at getting out of the UFC here in two fights. That's oh, well, that's, that's one back. of those. That's, that's one like of those. He said. That's something he said. To and me, he's got his boy there. That's an intangible factor that yeah. you can't really uh you can't measure that, you know what I mean? At the same time, he's also, in my opinion, a little bit more of the well-rounded of the two. Like, we know Jim Miller is going to try and get this done on the ground, whereas Cowboy, he's a striker, but he has tons of submission victories, and he's actually really, really good on the ground, especially off of his back. Um, I think this is a very interesting grappling fight if, when it does go there. It's going to go there. Oh, it's going to go there That's for sure, because... Not only will Jim try to get it there, but I think Donald will I think he'll play the game. It going yeah, there you know too. yeah, I think he'll. So you're going with Cowboy in this I'm gonna, fight. I'm gonna have to pick Cowboy. I, I got right. Cowboy by TKO in the third. Cool. That would pay massively, I would imagine. Pat and I are rolling with Jim Miller here. Ben is on Cowboy. We'll see what happens. Let's move on to the next fight. This is a good one. I want to go over Robbie Lawler versus Brian Barberina. What do you like here, Pena? Man. I got to go with my boy, Robbie. I've trained with him so much uh, at ATT and at Sanford. He's such a great guy. Um, Besides, like, the personal aspect, like, the personal side of things, um, I think this is a really, really good fight for him. The only thing I don't like about this fight for Robbie Lawler is the fact that, in my opinion, this is either a banger where these guys go out and slug it out or Barbarena wins a really boring decision. He's not the most, like, he's an exciting fighter. But I feel like when Barbarina goes out and wins decisions, it's kind of like a boring, ugly fight. Not really something you want to see. But Robbie's the dance partner that everybody wants because he's going to make it exciting no matter what. He's going to force you to fight a fight. Yeah, I think it favors Robbie wherever it goes to. I mean, obviously, there's the bias. I wasn't with him at all. He wasn't there at top team when I, when I got there. But at Sanford, a lot. Uh, just... Training with a guy like that, and then you know he's got his boy that comes in the wrestling class. He's a big wrestler, you know me with my wrestlers. I'm always gonna be by his there. You're always taking the wrestler, but yeah, man, you know I just I just think that fight I think that fight goes to Robbie wherever it goes, however it plays out. Like say they want to bang it out, I like Robbie Lawler in those exchanges, and say it gets technical, I, I still think Robbie Lawler takes it. So yeah, um, yeah, easy easy pick easy pick. So Robbie's coming off a a, not, a third round knockout win against Nick Diaz, but prior to that fight, he lost to Neil Magny, Colby Covington, Ben Askren, and RDA. He was on a four-fight four fight skid, but quality guys in all those fights. This is a toss-up fight for me. It's Yeah, it's like minus 120, and, and it's a toss-up fight that I don't see value on either side, so I'm probably going to pass on, on, on picking a side here just from a betting perspective, but I think it could be a good one. 100 percent i 100 percent agree with you matt as yeah. far as from a betting perspective i do not see money in this i don't see a, a, a reason I think robbie to pick even this. money has real value i completely disagree he's minus 120 he's the favorite barely favorite. it's like it's close to a pick him. Yeah, yeah it's close to a pick him. you're getting even money for robbie Lawler. yeah this fight. I think well let's look at brian's last that let's look at parlay bro so Brian, so Brian had that decision win over Matt Brown. I had Matt Brown in that fight, and I thought Matt Brown won that fight. He had five takedowns to Brian I agree zero. With that. I agree with that. Brian so outstruck him at one eleven to eighty one. But I, I'm telling you, I had Matt Brown in that fight. I was heavily disappointed he didn't get the nod. It was very close. And then Brian beat Darian Weeks the week before. He lost to Jason Witt uh, the fight before that, though. I don't know. I, again, I think there's a toss up. If I had gun to my head, I would probably take Robbie Lawler, but it's tough. So we're no, going with Robbie. That's a toss. We're going too. with Robbie. The three of us are going. One hundred percent going with Robbie. You got to go with him. You got to make a pick, right? Yeah. Here's a here's a good one. I want to get your guys' opinion on this. I don't know if you if you've trained with either of these guys, but Brad Riddell and Jalen Turner. Now, Jalen Turner originally opened up as a minus one seventy five favorite. He's now been bet down to minus one twenty five. Meaning a lot of money, early money, is coming in on Brad in this fight. I believe Jalen Turner might be a dark horse in this division. He's got. Crazy size and length. I want to know what you guys think on this fight. Who you would bet on if you had to take a side? 
So being that I was once a former UFC lightweight, and this is my division, and I've actually been matched up with with uh, Jalen Turner once before, I actually have a pretty decent uh, insight on this fight. Um, out of all the guy, like I, I, I would like to think that I have a pretty decent mind for this, and I approach my, uh, like my side of picking my fights and everything, um, with a pretty good mind. I'm not gonna lie, I, in in my opinion, I looked at Brad Riddle as the dark horse of this division. Really? Like, I feel like he's one of the most slept on guys. I looked at him as like, honestly, before Chandler got in the UFC, I looked at Riddle as like the Chandler of the UFC, not necessarily with what he's done in his career, but stylistically, he's mm-hmm. very, very reminiscent of Mike, but a little bit bigger as far as like height and uh, reach, I think. Um, I think this is a really, really interesting fight because it it shows two things for me. It shows if Riddle can get past some of the disadvantages of being on the shorter side at 55, because you're seeing a lot more guys on the 5'11", and up the side now from like 55 and down like mm-hmm. you're getting a lot more taller guys that are deciding they want to cut weight and then um and uh, the other aspect is this is for me is is jalen turner ready for those elite guys because in my opinion i put matt or i put brad riddle at a uh as an as one of those elite guys who's just not being talked about yet i think he's right there uh about to crack the top 10 and in my opinion while this is a little bit of, like I said, this is a, a little bit of a test for Brad. I think this is more of a uh, showing test for Jalen Turner. Like, what is he going to do when he's faced with someone who not only can crack, but is actually really good and, and is decent everywhere? Um, if I'm going to have to make the pick, I would pick Brad Riddle personally, just based off everything I've seen in um, in their fights. I think uh, Jalen's a little bit slow, and he's he's decent on the ground. But I think Brad is is good enough to to mitigate all the things that Jalen might throw at him. Um, I also like this is this is one of those fights where it's like really hard for me to look at from a completely unbiased view because like at one point I've been I've been talked to, they've talked to me about fighting Jalen and I've always I'm not gonna lie since Brad's gotten the UFC he's been one of those guys that's caught my eye that I've always looked at is like man that's a dude down the road that we're gonna end up fighting no matter what so like I said at the end of the day I have to go with Riddle on this pick and how do you think he gets it done because I don't the, the total isn't up yet but I think it's gonna be like a round and a half to be the over under you think it goes past to the two and a half minute mark in the second round you think it goes distance or do you think it's going to be like a quick finish one way or the other? I think this is either. I think this is one of those. This is this is going to be really odd to kind of wrap your mind around. But I think this either gets done in the second or this goes all the way. I think um, with both of these, with the, the body style of both of these guys, the body mechanics of both these guys being so different, it's going to take a little while for either one of them to really find their rhythm and figure out where they want to take the fight. You know, um, Riddle's a power puncher, but at the same time, he's got decent wrestling. So it's going to, I feel like he's going to take a little while to decide whether he wants to stick to the power punching, see if he can find the knockout, or if he wants to go ahead and just take it to the ground and try and control and win a, a dominant decision. But I, if I'm putting money on uh, on a, a pick and a finish, I'd have to go with Brad Riddle second round knockout. You like your Pat? Man, I'm not even too uh, not too familiar. I would, well, I wouldn't even yeah, yeah. This fight. I've been super high on Jalen Turner, and again, he opened at minus one seventy five. He's although I just checked right now, he's down to minus one fifteen. I mean, that's a massive swing. So this fight is becoming very close to a pick at well, this just point. Says, just says people are hopping on the, on the Riddle train. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's exactly what it means. Early early money's coming yeah. in on Riddle. So, um, and, and like to, to, to what I just said, I think Brad Riddle is one of those sleeper guys that people just haven't talked about because everyone else at, C, at City Kickboxing is doing so well. You know what I mean? You got Kai Car France who's about to fight for the uh, interim title. Izzy Volkanovski. Oh, he's over there with those guys. Yeah, he's oh, okay. he's the fifty five er at City Kickboxing oh. with Kai Car France, Volkanovski, he's on a real Israel team. Adesanya. Yeah. Like, dude, his main training partners oh, are fucking guys, Izzy yeah. and Volk. Like, that's that's a solid right, I'll, team I'll to be around. Tell the, tell the guy just off of your knowledge. <laughs> it's gonna be a, gonna be a good fight for sure. Are you taking a pick? 
I have to go Jalen Turner just because I just think the size and length will be the difference. Wow. I like this. I like this. We've uh, we've I we've gotta go with it. Disagree. I gotta on, go with on every pick. This is good. This is a good podcast. Good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like uh, we all took Robbie though. Okay, yeah, that's right. That's right. We all took Robbie. But I mean, that's Robbie Lawler, man. How do you Come pick on. against Robbie Lawler? Yeah. Here's another uh, solid fight: Ian Gary and Gabe Green. I was at Ian Gary's last fight, um, Volkanovski versus the Korean Zombie, and honestly, I watched it live and. To be honest, I wasn't that impressed with him. I think he's a little bit overhyped right now. Uh, let me pull up the betting odds on this fight, but what do you guys like here? Ian Gary versus Gabe Green. Um, Pat, I'm you. You trained with Ian, right? No, never you never trained with Ian. I so I, I once again another guy I trained with. I was uh, I just I didn't really formally leave Sanford, but like after the Olympic trials, I think this would they kind of got him in. From Ireland, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, did you ever hear about the story with him? No, what do you Dog, mean? It's, it's like a pretty fucked up story or something like that. So he goes over there. He's uh, he's Irish, goes to the UK, and wins the Cage Warriors belt, which is like the biggest <laughs> promotion in Europe. You know what I mean? And like his, his, his team out there in Ireland just like left him high and dry. Like with nobody. Like I, I, I want to say it was like some crazy story. Like he went and fought the Cage Warrior for the Cage Warriors 170 belt with, with like almost without a corner or something like that. It was crazy. Mm, but or, he still got it done. He still got it done. Oh, respect, then. respect. Fuck it. Well, one hundred percent. Seems like a good. Uh, but no, man, I train. I train with like him. Good, no, dude, Ian's really good. And to uh, to what you're saying, Matt, I don't necessarily think he's overrated. I think <laughs> fans and promoters, people in the right. sport, I think we start getting, um, we start putting hype way too much hype beside, behind some of these young guys and putting way too much pressure on them to perform at a level that it's not necessarily that they can't do, but that they need to grow into. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I would personally probably say like that's something that kind of happened with me in my career uh, a little bit in the UFC um, is when I was coming up when I first got there. It's like everyone was like they saw the things I did on The Ultimate Fighter I'm pretty good with the interviews and everything. So everyone put all this hype behind me, expecting me to go out there and be like an Israel Adesanya and go win the belt in my second um, my second year in the company. But it's like, dog, I'm the kind of guy I want to slow burn. I'd like to be able to grow into to my roster spot. Not only that way, so, so I can be fighting, you know, I have a career with, with the company. Yeah. Um, and I think Ian's somewhat of a similar guy. Like, he's, he's shown to me in his fights that... Um, even when it gets tough, he still has the ability to keep going, and he still he has the talent without a doubt. He has the talent to be that guy. I just think um, he needs a little bit more time to to grow into that. I think Ian. I mean, you know, on paper he should go out there and find like a second round, third round TKO in in this fight. But Gabe Green's a really really tough guy. I think this is going to be another unanimous or split decision for Ian Gary. Yeah, Ian Gary's he's only minus one forty eight right now as a favorite, so that's really not a bad price point um, for a guy like him. Um, Gabe Green's coming off of two straight wins. I mean, I I would like to see what the the odds are on an Ian Gary decision. Especially you can get that at like plus one fifty or so. It's not up yet, um, but I think that would be a solid. That's probably where I would put money on this fight. The decision you're saying. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you if you know anything about this game, Green dude, he's a tough son of a bitch. Yeah. Like he he'll take a beating and then come out of nowhere and just win the fight. Right. Yeah, I, I like the decision there. Next up, here's a really really good one: Pedro Munoz versus Sugar Sean O'Malley. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is I'm dog. going with this my dog. dog, that boy, the American top team Brazilian yeah. Pedro Munoz. What you fuck you mean, boy? You think I'm gonna pick against that boy? That's my dog, Pedro. Right. He getting in that boy Sean O'Malley ass. Fuck you mean, How dog of the night. So he's plus two fifteen right now as the yeah. underdog. Do you like him night. on the money line, or do you think he's gonna knock out Sugar Sean O'Malley? Boy, he getting in there. He getting in ass with a motherfucking leg kick TKO. We gonna call this leg kick TKO number two for O'Malley. <laughs> boy is getting in that shit. TKO, TKO, leg kick uh, first round. Mm, I don't know, man. This could be really? a second round TKO. I'm telling you, man, Pedro Munoz is, is he's one of those one of the few guys I have a lot of respect for. Bro, in the room in the room, I love he was one of the few like 35ers other than Peter Yan that would like come up to my big ass and be like, yo, I want to go with you. 
right. and like we just get to banging. And Pedro's one of those guys. He slings. He, he loves it. He's a fighter, bro. And not only that, but he's a great guy. Always brings his daughter in the gym. Like she's, it's, it's, it's he's a really, really. It's hard to to not like a guy like yeah. Pedro Munoz. So that's it's, what makes these pickups hard when you get our opinion from training with a lot. Of yeah, yeah, that's it's a good, it's a good it's topic. Too. It's a good topic to talk about because, like, you I hate seeing your people lose. Too. Yeah. Oh no, with, without a doubt. Like, if if uh, Sean uh, goes out there and does what everybody's expecting him to do, because look, he's I want to say he's plus two fifty, dude. Is he everyone plus 250? thinks he's winning this fight. So dude. right now, Pedro is a plus two fifty underdog. Crazy. Sean O'Malley's minus two sixty. But here's the they thing. They just think you're boy. Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing up. about here's the thing about the betting side of things. When fighters Nuts. have hype behind them and and massive publicity, I mean, Sugar Sean O'Malley's got like seven million followers on Instagram, right? When guys have hype and stuff around them, the betting odds always shift based on that. And as a sports better, you can find value on the other side because of how much public action is coming in on that fighter in Sean O'Malley. So if you like Munoz here. Plus 215 is a really good number. And here's Dog the thing. The He's lost four of his last five, but it's against guys like Dominic Cruz, Jose Aldo, Frankie mm. Edgar, Aljamain Sterling. So he's guys. lost to really credible guys that I think would destroy Sean O'Malley, if we're, if we're being honest. I was going to say, was, and that's what I was going to say. Strength of schedule all day. Pedro has fought champions. O'Malley has, has, hasn't True. even... Re- Dude, O'Malley's known for going in there with a guy who got famous for... Beating him up for O'Malley Chris, beating uh, him up. Mutun, Mutino, yeah, yeah. whatever the hell his name is. <laughs> Did you see he got Maravilla. TKO'd his next fight too? Yeah. yeah. But the, okay, and here's here's the big thing for me about with uh Pedro too. Everyone said the same thing when he got matched up with Cody Garbrandt. And look what happened there. Yeah. But he, do you feel like Cody was starting to like become a shell of himself by then? Or do you think that was in 2019? No, I would 100%. I think that stone. was the uh, I, no, I think I think honestly, if you want to be real, I think Pedro's the one that started that. Yeah, that's true. Because that's yeah, he takes the losses to Dillashaw, but that's TJ Dillashaw. That's one of the go- that's one of the bantamweight goats. Yeah, you get knocked out by Pedro Munoz, who's oh, no offense to Pedro, but I mean he's not this, he's not considered in the same air as a, as a TJ Dillashaw right now. He hasn't got the, to the belt yet. Yeah, so getting knocked out by Pedro. I think that probably did a little bit more mentally, uh, a, a little bit more damage mentally to Garbrandt than yeah. the Dillashaw fights. Well, he, because Garbrandt got, he, Rob Font landed 176 strikes against him, and he lost that decision. And then he went up against Kai Kara France, which I had a huge bet on a Kai Kara France knockout against Garbrandt, because it's another one of those fighters where I'm just like, same thing with Cowboy Cerrone when I took Alex Moreno. Don't cut weight when you've been getting knocked Bro, out. here's the thing. Here's yeah, my... I was telling Pat this probably about a year ago. One of my favorite betting strategies in the UFC or in combat sports in general is not picking a guy that you like to win, but picking against the guy that you feel like is just on his way out. I did it with Alex Morono against Cowboy Cerrone. I did it with Kai Car France getting a knockout against Cody Garbrandt. And I love doing that. And that's why I think there is some value in Jim Miller, you know, right. in the in this if matchup. And dog. I'm gonna wait to see if what the odds dog. are. Yeah. And I also think, and this has nothing I to do with Sean O'Malley, because obviously Sean O'Malley's not on his way out. But I do think when you, I like betting against fighters that are now going up, stepping up in a level of competition. And especially when I'm getting odds on it, too. Like plus 215 on a guy like That's Pedro Munoz. That's what I'm saying. The dog I think of the night. It he, sounds like all him. three of us like that, him as the dog of the night. I'm going, I'm going to tell him. The only dog thing dog. I will say to that is the one thing I think you guys are forgetting about is Jim Miller's in the exact same spot in his career as Cowboy. Yeah. He's on his way out. This is a perfect matchup for Cowboy. If there's yeah. if there was a ma- if there was a a matchup to give Cowboy other than As Joe Lozon, the other ones that he's had too. So you can see the UFC work. I didn't know Cowboy made that uh, statement. Yeah, like no, he's because so he wants to be the first UFC catering because he wants to, to get the forty fights. No, he wants to get to 50, 50 fights, That's fifty right. uh, Zufa fights. So he Carlos, wants to be the you first. Can see that they're making the matchups more fucking feasible. I know him, like, the, the fact that they try to do Lozon. That's yeah, that is the one point. thing about about combat sports, man. They yeah. I feel like, especially the UFC, bro. <laughs> yeah. You start going on the way out, and uh, you're a big name. Uh, like, look at Anderson Silva. Uh, Why are you fighting Uriah Hall in your <laughs> retirement fight? <laughs> Killer. Killer. Nigga, why did he ever fight <laughs> Stylebender? Yeah, cool. Why did that happen? I don't know. He's just that good, dog. But 
Forget Anderson is that Forget good. Hey, he is that good. He's Anderson my favorite Jake fighter. Paul. He's the reason I would love I to see fighting. that. I would Anderson love to see. Him. Yeah, I would love to see that. I think Anderson's knocking him out. I did too. Oh, no, I'm not. I hate to to stir because we got to get right. We got to get back to UFC. But y'all yeah. see uh, Jake Paul, Tommy Fury, finally. Yeah, that got re- yeah, before my birthday, August sixth. August sixth. Yeah. What do you think's gonna happen in that fight? I think we're gonna see if Jake Paul's a real boxer or not. This is going to be yeah. the first time he's going to have. I think this will be the first time he actually has to go out there and box. Because I've said this from the jump. And Pat, you know, I've quoted this. He, when he picked Tyron, he picked the most credentialed UFC fighter that he could go out there and feasibly be. And a five-time UFC champion as a wrestler, not known for their hands, but known for one-punch knockout power. Yeah. These then, like that's honestly, bro. Uh, if you he, look at the Jake Paul, the way he's approached his entire boxing career, dude is smart. Like yeah. he's he's figured it out. Like he's called out all the right opponents, all guys that will not only that are beatable, Jake but Paul, will Kamaru come Uzman. back to him. It's like saying that if he goes out Kamaru Usman, he which he has. How is that not credible? It's a UFC champ just because. Kamaru, we know him as Marty from the wrestler in Nebraska, Carney. Just because that's him <laughs> doesn't mean that Jake Paul can't knock his ass out. No He's still way. taking the UFC. Yes, bro. You think he'll knock out Kamaru? I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> Jake Quit Paul. sleeping for Jake fucking Paul. <laughs> Jake Paul right. ain't got no hands, bro. bro. If he hits somebody else with his overhand right and drops Tommy Fury, what, what you going to say to that? I'll get like look at this point at if this he point, if he drops yeah, if he drops Tommy Fury haters. I will give that man the respect he deserves. <laughs> but you ain't getting shit for knocking out Ben Askren and Tyron Ty Woodley from me. What, bro, come on, bro. bro I can't believe you just said that Jake Paul would Nate knock out talks, knocked out boxing. Tyron Woodley. I understand boxing, but yes, you're talking about somebody who has a whole lifestyle and camp and all the a- asset and funds and resources available, and still ain't good at the highest level. <laughs> And and still all, right, all right, let's get away from this. He might not be shit. good, but he's. All right, he's here's here he's is a. Uh, I want to get your guys' opinion on this next fight because I'm very very intrigued. We're on the main card right now. Yeah, yeah, we're on the main card. I'm very intrigued by this one. Sean Strickland versus Alex Pereira. This Ooh. is an absolute banger. I believe the best value on this fight is for it to go to distance. I think that. Well, I, I think that. I think Alex Pereira might win a decision. Um. Because Sean Strickland is a tough motherfucker. Yeah, like, I got Strickland, man. This guy you have Strickland in this has, fight? Yeah. This guy here is I just think... New I think a, yeah, but I think Alex has Strickland. just more versatile striking Bro, as a kickboxer. And like Strickland... to grapple or do any other MMA, this guy, per- Ferrero, is going to get so exposed. I mean, he's I don't, fast, though. I don't think so, bro. Did you see his, did you see his fight against Bruno Silva? Is he grappled? Did you see his fight against Bruno Silva? Did you watch that I fight? I did. I did. The thing about it is, like, and let's see, like, Strickland probably will employ a grapple heavy game. I mean, I would it'd be smart to do, but he's not that dude. He's, he's not, not that not nigga. That he's not a grappling right. ass nigga. Yeah. yeah. Like, he is a go out there and sling yeah. him type of nigga. And that's, and not, then, bro, you, that's, that's, not, that's not conducive to a man that knocked out Israel Adesanya in boxing gloves. Talking about, yeah, the Adesanya's point, speaking on that knockout, saying how. These, these these MMA pillars, like damn, imagine. And did you okay, see? Did you see and have you? But have you though. seen? Uh, have you seen the fight? The the first fight because they fought twice in kickboxing. Adesanya arguably won the first. Like it was a, a split decision the first time, and you could say Adesanya won. And then the second fight, Adesanya was getting his shit until he, until that knockout. But at the same time. Adesanya getting in his shit up until that knockout doesn't negate the fact that that nigga Alex Pereira hit that boy with that one hitter quitter said yeah. bye bye. <laughs> like, if he does that, if he does that asleep. shit. Him and May with the four like, ounces. Yeah, you, you know that's it's all cr- I'm saying. Woo! Like the same thing. And here's the thing: in 2018, uh, Sean Strickland was knocked out by a kick. In 2018, he was knocked out by a kick, and then in 2017, he lost to Kamar Usman. But he has not lost a fight in four years. You know, he fought Brendan Allen. He fought Uriah Hall. I thought his fight against Jack Hermanson was, I mean, it was very boring. Oh, and dude, it was. And he just, he coasted his way to a decision there. Um, but I don't know, man. I, I really think the UFC wants to see 
Alex Pereira versus they Izzy do. eventually. And I almost feel like this is a, a an opportunity for Alex to get a decision win here. Just point fight in. He's going to be the more versatile fighter. He's going to. It's only a three round fight. I just feel like he's going to do enough to get it done. Um, and I think Strickland won't get knocked out here, but I don't think. I just don't see him having enough volume against Alex to, to, to win this decision. It's interesting that this is at 185, too, because I think if Pereira wins, this is the exact same situation as when they gave Dan Henderson the title fight against Michael Bisping, you know, like to get that win back. And, like, let's be real if you're the UFC, that's the way, like, the only dude that's ever knocked out your champ or it's ever really touched your champ. Although I do want to say a uh, shout out to Artem Vakitov because I think he won. I think he like uh, Alex Pereira's last two glory kickboxing fights where he won the light heavyweight belt. I think he lost those. That boy Artem Vakitov from Russia. That boy whooped that ass. Really? They they had glory hold him because he's Russian and they just um they just like axed all their Russian fighters. Now the Russian the Russian guy though Artem. Yeah, he's Artem. A I think he's I think he got up in Alex for his ass. Yeah. I'm gonna have to agree with you, Matt. I think it's a uh, an Alex Pereira de- decision in the third. Well, I mean, obviously decision in the third is going all the way. We got the decision with Pereira, Matt, and DPR. I'm gonna have to agree with Matt. Matt. Yeah, I see the setup, but I still just think the vetness and savviness of Sean Strickland and his streak. Yeah, talk to the mic. Can't hear you. Yeah, I think, I think, I think Sean Strickland. He's a vet. I think, I think you're going with a Strickland decision. Shot. Yeah, I'm taking Strickland. Fair enough. We're split yeah. two one on that one. All yeah. right, moving on. Alexander Volkanovsky and Max Holloway. Now, here's the crazy know. thing about this fight. I would, I would make the yeah. argument that eighty or ninety percent of people are going to be on Volkanovsky here, um, and he's a minus one eighty favorite. Now. From a betting perspective, these first two fights were very close for the most part. You know, so minus 180 is is a significant juice there. But what do you guys think? Do you think Max Holloway has a chance? And if so, what does he have to do to win this fight? Shit, for, I thought he won both fights before. I'm not going to lie. I thought he I, won both times. I definitely, I, I'm Personally, on the side I that I definitely both. think he should be the champ now. I think he won the belt the first, or not the first, but the second time for sure. I think he won the second fight for sure. Um, the first one's a little bit more of a toss up to me, but this is one of those, like, I've never seen another fighter in that position where they, where not only do you feel you've won the fight, but a majority of the public thinks you've won the fight twice against the same opponent. And it's for the belt. Like, uh, this is one of the weird, the first times where you're ever seeing a trilogy where uh, a guy is 0 and 2 in the trilogy as well. Um, That's true. With it still being competitive. Like, and we, we're sitting here talking about it like, like this is a toss up. Um, That's why you got to take Holloway, in my opinion. It is a toss up. And for him, what's he? What's He's at plus 160 right now yeah, as an underdog. How do, you, how do you not take that? I don't yeah. Know. I don't so know. Here, it's just the fact that the judges have have never gone on his side in this matchup. That's <laughs> very hard to. Yeah. Very very. So hard what to would pick. you take if you had to bet it? Because plus one sixty is a nice spot for if you think it's a toss up fight, right? That's Here's, what I'm saying. I the mean, value if, as a better, if I'm me, is not you can't pass that up. Like as, yeah. as a better, if I'm betting, obviously I'm betting on Max Holloway, but. Do I think he, I, and if you're going to ask me, I think he's going to end up getting fucked again and robbed <laughs> in a Volkanovsky split decision. Like, that's just probably yeah. how it's going to be. Another decision, right? Another decision. So, how, so you, is there any Holloway's chance? Holloway's got to win by decision. Is there they got to dethrone Volkanovsky. Think is, about the movie. They have to set up something. But then does that, do you automatically give Volk the rematch? Of course. Or Ortega. I think. Well, why do you want to? Why, do you, you want to see that a fourth time? But yeah. We fight. Are we fighting that fight for the rest of our lives at one forty-five? <laughs> That's the only fight. It's kind of like the the Brandon Moreno uh, <laughs> for, for at, at the right? same time it though. Is just like that. It <laughs> is 20, just like that. But you at one twenty-five, who? Right? That's a spectacle. Who's you who? Else, you don't like, I like Kai Kara France, who's but I just don't it? think. I don't think there's anybody else right now that's truly deserving. Yeah. Like Kai definitely has done his thing to 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 get to the belt but it's like dog you know, those guys are so high level those guys like they're pushing each other to a new Ortega? to a new height every fight like what's the point in seeing anyone else other than moreno and figueredo 
I like yeah. Ortega, but the fact that both both yeah. men have put that ass whooping on him, like yeah. bad too. And Max and Holloway whooped his ass so bad that man shaved all of his head off, hair, his hair off. I mean, but man, <laughs> he had he had uh, Volkanovski in such a compromised scenario. I mean, he's got some skill set that just never can never take him out of the game. Let me let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. If he's still breathing, I still you gotta gotta. I mean, I think we all agree here that if you're putting money on this fight, the money is to put it on Max Holloway, regardless of who you think is going to win. Let me ask you this. I think Max won, but the first two times, I think he's going to win a third time, and for the value of plus whatever, it's worth. Yeah, Uh, we're we're all we're all Max Holloway as a dog, just because the odds make it make sense. But let me ask you this. The fight to go to distance is minus 180. Is there any chance that this fight doesn't go to the distance? Hell yeah, it's a fight. I'm just saying, at minus 180, <laughs> like, this fight has, has shown it's going to go the distance. So this is going to sound crazy, but if you, ask, if you put a gun in my head and you said, who do you, if, if there was someone that, that got the finish, I think it's Max. Really? Because Volk has been rocked a few times in his UFC career. I don't think I've ever seen Max take a stumble. Yeah, like I don't think he's ever even took his a shot. Chin's he's never been knocked out. He's right? ne- never or, been knocked out. Volkanovski never been knocked down. Never been rocked. I mean, Volkanovski just just knocked out uh, the Korean zombie. That's Korean zombie. I was at that fight, bro, and that was bad. I think Herb Dean was the ref, and I had Volkanovski by knockout, and I was sweating because it was the fourth round, <laughs> and I'm like sitting there, and I actually made a TikTok video of it because Herb Dean stopped the fight, but like Korean zombie's head was like getting knocked back and shit, like the dude was done, but like. Some refs, you know how it is in the UFC. Like Some would die. not stop it. Oh, and yeah. I was there sweating, like bro. Die, huh? I was, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, so we're going. We're all going with Max Holloway. It seems like we like the the fight to go the distance. Is that fair? Or you think it's good? I think I think that fight goes the distance. At minus one eighty, I think that's a good parlay piece. Honestly, I don't yeah. see either guy getting a finish. I really don't. But we'll see what happens. All right, let's go to the main event. Now this one's very interesting. Israel Adesanya versus Jared Cannonier. Derek Cannonier is coming off a fight against Derek Brunson where he was getting his ass beat in that first round. Yeah, I bet significant really dollars on Derek Brunson in that fight. Uh, then Brunson comes out in the second round and he ends up gassing out and gets finished. Cannonier is obviously a huge dude for this division who's cut down a lot of weight. What do you guys like in this fight? Because Israel Adesanya is a huge favorite right now. Bro, the only way Jared Cannonier uh, beats Israel Adesanya is if he out niggas him. <laughs> Straight up, <laughs> like there ain't no way. Wait, how does he even win? Does he grab him? There does ain't he no take way. him down and hold him down. Does he submit him? Does he? he I just don't see in a, any any winnable scenarios for this guy, man. Is yeah, because good, is because he it, needs to fight somebody that can like like wrestle a, him and hold him down, and the dude's the best striker in the game. He is, but not picking four up, ounce right? gloves on on the chin would do anything. So. I, that's the way I like. If, if Jared Cannonier is going to get it done, it's a hail mary knockout. I just I can't see like skill wise. Like dude, yeah, Pat so. just brought it up. He was getting his ass whooped by Derek Brunson, and I and Adesanya made Derek Brunson look like an amateur when they fought. Like even on the wrestling tip, like he was uh, he had him he had him on skates. You know, yeah. made it look made Brunson's wrestling attempts look really bad. Like and, very, you know, Derek's not like. World team level, but he's a he's a champ, great he's MMA a vet, wrestler. A MMA wrestler, exactly. That's what I was like, no, he's a like very he, very good he's MMA taught wrestler. Some shit in Sanford, just for MMA wrestling. You know, getting to work with him, he's a vet, man. He's gonna have stuff. So, like, just to speak on your point, that's what shocked me is his ability. That's one thing I think. No, no, that's to what I'm mitigate rest. Even though I say this motherfucker can't wrestle the way I have a paper bag, I'd scoop more than that. But then I go watch motherfuckers, and I'm like, oh. He's got three, four, five, six, seven tactics to defend, bro. A he, takedown. You know what I mean? People so really like. I think people him. really, no. really do sleep yeah. on Israel's. Because uh, they're not. They're not. He's got good, great. Defense. Defense. He's yeah. got great takedown defense. Exactly. So and he and, and uh, no. He so honestly, I, I personally I think this. I think Adesanya is just going to piece him up on the feet and coast as well. But if Canadier like, comes in and adopts a Blahovitz John Jan type method where he's not. The best killer, like he's not a Gilbert Burns type style finisher, or he's not a, you know, Hamzat style wrestler, but he's a big enough guy. Cannonier coming in the next day at two fifteen, 
might be able to tussle and get some dirty boxes, some clinching, some wall takedowns to where he, I don't know, does he hold? Does he ride? I agree with you. Like that, that is probably like the best way to try and get the win. Ty has to fight him, right? You can't just sit there and strike with him, right? And not to take anything from Jan, but I think the only reason he was able to implement that game plan is because of the size disparity. That's what I'm saying. Cannoneer might have something. Uh, are like you ready that. for these odds right here, Pat? But we're talking. Jared Cannoneer by KO or TKO is five to one. Jared oh. Cannoneer by submission is 17 to one odds. Are either of those bets live? I feel like the KO is. At five to one. At five to one. I think the only way he he could get a KO is if he just gets his ass beat for two rounds and then as he gets tired and, and really, <laughs> to me, I feel like he gets him dry. Like if, if he's gonna get the KO, it's yeah. like hit some clean, hits wow. him clean yeah. dry in like the, the first through, like yeah, the first like thirty seconds. Matrix, right? Yeah, starts downloading him. I I like that uh, early. KO All right, well then let's look at this. Here? If we, I mean, if we're, if, we're, if we're asking, like, if any of those bets are live, if, if there's any money to be placed on a, on a Jared Cannonier finish, I think it's a very early KO, in my opinion. Jared Cannonier to win in one in rounds one or two is 9-1. to one. Oh, man. Are you sprinkling on that? What's what the sign of the win by uh, decision? Um... Because I think, honestly, I think Adesanya by points plus 125. Not attractive, but I think that's how he gets it done. It's still plus 125. Plus 220 by KO or TKO. Try, is he? So what, yeah. Wow. Wow. Which is a, it's a five round fight. I mean, right. I, I would honestly lean towards that. I just think Cannonier's a big guy to go five rounds with him, especially if Izzy's having a lot of success. Izzy I is think, going to dog him. Plus 220. Yeah, I, I think that's that, the bet. That right there. Where is he? I like that because I think. That is the one. Oh, my bad. I, I like that because I think if Izzy is gonna get it done, like he finishes him, it'd be like over, like a like in the fourth round. Like Cannonier is taking and just absorbs so much damage. That's just can't the pick. Get it over. All right, that's the full UFC two six seventy six card. Before we finish this, we're gonna build a parlay together, the three of us right now. It's a one hundred dollar parlay. I need your favorite pick of the night from each of you, and then I'm gonna throw in my favorite pick. We're going to go a three-fight parlay. I want your most conservative, like, I know there's no such thing as a lock in sports betting or in fights, but I want your most conservative pick that you're like, this shit ain't losing. We're going to start with, with Pena. Out of everything we talked about tonight, what are you the most confident on? I'll recap a little of it. We have Adesanya Cannonier, We have Holloway, Volkanovsky, Pereira, Sean Strickland. Sugar Sean O'Malley, Pedro Munez. So that's that's where I'm going. I think the the lock for me would be uh, the Pajeda fight by uh, decision. That's my. So we can't. So we'll just throw Pereira money line in just to be safe. All right. So that's minus one fifteen. PD three. Pereira over Strickland. Yeah. That's, that's your most confident pick. That's, I think that's my most confident pick. Really. Oh. Give us yours. Give us your most confident play. I wouldn't even be mad at you if we put the dog in there at uh uh the plus two fifteen on Munoz. Munoz dog, I'm not gonna lie, that's really where I wanted to go. But I that's that's really, really Damn. where I wanted to go. We but can throw in a dog if we want. All right, okay, let's let's right uh, yeah, throw we'll, my boy Munoz in there. Let's the throw dog. let's throw Munoz in there just because Pat Pat likes Strickland, so we'll throw Munoz in yeah, there. We'll throw we're, Munoz. We're all good with Munoz. All right, Munoz at plus two hundred on Bet MGM. That's the first leg. What's your what's your favorite one, Pat? Right, I think my lock of the night is Robbie Lawler. But all right, Robbie Lawler at minus one twenty. I just think he's, he's he's big. And then one for me. I'm going. Oh man, this is really tough now because I can't think Jalen Turner. Why is Uriah Hall such a dog against Andre Munoz? Munoz. Oh, I know what I'm taking. I'm taking. The Holloway fight to go the distance is my bet. Oh, for sure. Which I'm trying to find. I might need to get a fan. If you take him over four and a half, plus 170. Oh, no. I want to take. I, I kind of want to take uh, Adesanya by, by by knockout. Is that is that is that TKO. risky? I think that's too risky, man. Uh, Jared can't hear you. Can't hear you. I said, I think that's a little bit too risky. Yeah. Jared Cannonier can take that damage. 
All right, all right, here's what we're doing then. I'm going, yes, the flight will go to distance, Volkanovsky Holloway, that's minus 180. And then we're going, uh, Pedro Munoz plus 215, and Robbie Lawler minus 118. You ready for this? A hundred dollar parlay. Pays eight hundred dollars. Oh, eight to one damn, on that three good. team parlay. Eight, you like wow, that? Wow, that's, that's a great. Gross. That's a great. All right, to recap it, here's the parlay. One hundred dollars pays eight hundred dollars. Pedro Munoz money line at plus two fifteen against Sugar Sean O'Malley. The fight to go the distance, Volkanovski versus Holloway at minus one eighty, and Robbie Lawler money line against Brian minus one eighteen. And that is a great parlay, ladies and gentlemen. I think that is a like very, that, that very shit sounds confident. like it's about to hit. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> so uh, we got 15 minutes here, guys. Let's. Uh, it's, I mean, obviously, the, by the time this episode comes out, the the fight will already be done. Yeah. Let's uh, let's just talk a little bit about the Bellator card this weekend. It's let's uh, do it. Uh, Musashi Evelyn. Musashi Evelyn, and then we got two fights in the bantamweight tournament, the bantamweight world grand prix i want to say danny sabatello and leandro higo and then that magomedov magomedov 135er guy uh the tiger and then one of my old training partners enrique barzola um I don't know nothing about them, uh, give me give me one know, fight and i'll give you the odds which fight you want to talk about start, start at the bottom of it we'll start with sabatello uh, dog. So, uh sabatello and higo sabatello is minus 550 as the favorite, huge favorite, huge, wow. huge, huge favorite, huge, huge favorite. That makes you want to go with the other guy just so some fun. I know, right? I, I mean, plus three ninety, plus three ninety. I mean, he go, he go is good. He's he's uh he's a pit bull brother. He's been training with our boy Boris. Boris Love. He's That's been training Boris with Boris Love. Oh yeah. yes, the Boris tells me this guy uh Sabato is gonna try to wrestle fuck him. Or, yeah. So now they got Boris wrestle fucking him. You know? So what do we? What I mean? What do you know? Like, well, I know that I know that Sabatello ain't Boris Love. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I know that, that boy so, Boris. That boy <laughs> Boris, a demon boy. That, that boy, boy Boris right. really on some demon yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, he really like that. So I so, swear to God, so, he done, he Boris. Boris Boris Lobden made the goat shed famous. Boy, Boris Lobden. <laughs> hey, hey, he owned the shed. They, they, they owe him. They, they owe him, bro. The race, they be trying to call, call his technique their technique. They, I swear to Boris God. Boris got the whole shed sick. Um, <laughs> so, nah, if we're going to take... Nah, obviously, if uh, we're taking... So, is this your dog of the Bellator card? Yeah, yeah, just because my buddy Boris helping, and I think this guy is going to make the jump necessary. I really... The, the Sabatola cat... I, I think his wrestling is kind of subpar, and, and that's how he's winning. If, if Boris is even able to help get this guy 20% better at wrestling to stop takedowns, he can probably get off on him. Here's the big thing for me in this matchup, too, is um, the fact that Higo has fought at the championship level before. Like, I'm, right. I'm, he's fought for a world title. Right. Sabatello hasn't there. really, like, Sabatello's last fight, um, who did he fight? I don't know. It was a no. It was a I decent. It was a decent. Leg, it was a decent opponent. But that was like the first time he's ever fought anybody with a with a name, and he only gets it done one way, and it's a very predictable, very boring way. Like it's just not conducive to to being um, like able to sustain to yourself. He's not trying to go out there and, and, and get he's the not kill. Trying yeah. to go out there, damage, finish. He's not trying to go. Out, you know, he's not running the system. He's and when you're there, when you're exactly when you're a dude and when you're a dude like like leandro higo who's seen you know the things that he has seen the opponents he has in there with the pitbull brothers and you know you got a guy in there who's not really trying to kill you so that's mentally it's easy walkthrough what's the second fight you want to go over i'll give you the odds Uh, on uh magomedov and barzola magomedov or something like that. Magomedov is minus one sixty six. Barzola is plus one thirty six as a dog. Ooh, plus one thirty six. I mean, I I think that's a little bit close to bet on. Um, that's very interesting to me because I would think I think these Russian dudes when they see a Russian name on a card, these bookies just put all their money on them. It's, it's weird. They they just. If you say name. You say name. Is it weird? <laughs> <laughs> is it weird? <laughs> is it weird? <laughs> You got how OB weird is at that? the end of your name. <laughs> okay. How weird is right, that? You got, you got a point. But my boy Enrique Barzola, he's coming, he coming with that heat, bro. Is he, 
Yeah, no, Enrique is really good. Oh, I, no, I uh, he's one of my main training spa- uh, sparring partners when I fought Matt Wyman. Um, no, um, ATT also. AKA. It was back uh, when I was in AKA. Coast yeah, West oh. Coast. No, no, no. Enrique, I want to say he's like um, Peruvian or something like that. Oh. He's he's from one of the South American countries oh, that doesn't so have Peruvian. like a lot of uh, fighters. And I, I that's one of those big like anti- um, intangibles that motivates guys. You know, when you're one of the only guys from your country that's making a name for themselves. Hell yeah. It's, it, that is a huge motivating factor. Yes. Not only that, yeah. but Enrique is like a tough bastard. Like he's one of those guys that will take a shot and keep rolling, keep coming and, and go even harder. And he's like one of those dudes you don't sleep on technically. He he reminds me of like your quintessential Mexican boxer that actually knows how to box. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, if he's the dog, I would say take him in this. I'd, I'd say take him in a in a decision. That's cool. That's cool. So you guys are rocking with two Bellator dogs here. Well, I, I didn't necessarily co-sign, but I'm going to weigh in <laughs> that that I do think that uh, Luis's statements hold a lot of weight because like. You know, just just like the for example, the Pan American Games, they were held in Peru, right? You're all trying. You make that team from you know whether you're Chile or Peru, wherever you're representing. It's a huge deal to be one of the only people to to represent your country at the World Championships. So you know, one can only go as far as to think of the, it's going to hold the same weight when you're representing your country in the world stage. You know, what other promotions are there? bigger than the you know ufc bellator one right i mean there's not many not only other, that i, I don't know say, any fighters from peru other than this guy it might be ecuador i know he, i don't want to okay. say peru but, but i know south he's from american south, I, from yeah. a smaller south american country um, but it's the same thing not only that this is a band of, exactly for the olympics or the world championships this is a million this, dollar band and weight tournament this guy has an opportunity to put his whole country and change his life so i uh, not that not that i'm going to tail the pick you know i do I do like the uh, Hugo pick against uh, Sabatello. I'm definitely gonna throw some some plus three nine. Yeah, it's great value. And like uh, Luis made a great point with the just the level. You gotta you gotta really reference these guys as competition, it's strength of schedule, like quality of losses versus quality of wins. I think that's a huge thing that everybody just looks at the record and they're like, oh, oh. Yeah. And, and and they're not really doing their you know enough diligence. thorough research. Like you gotta do your you gotta do your due diligence and then see see why one is giving you good value i don't know this guy well enough to put necessarily my bread behind him on this pick but i do like his reason why he's better um, like and to uh to go off what you just said pat i think that is a huge huge factor in the next fight the main event Gegard Musasi and johnny eblin i think oh. strength of schedule yeah. is just completely Dude. incomparable this guy, this guy is Musashi not. This is guy is everybody. not ready. I mean, Musashi and Adesanya should be fighting. You know? Yes, <laughs> that's the fight I want to see. That is the fight to make. That is the fight to make in know, MMA. Is Musashi and Israel Adesanya? You know, I know uh, Johnny uh, Eblen. Eblen, he's a tough uh, cat. A little bit of wrestling in the background, and you know, as corny as I think he is, I just think he's. Way in over his head. Corny. As corny as I think you are, you're still that much in over your head. Like I feel <laughs> fucking bad for this cat, bro. Like I, I like Johnny. Like he's all a right. nice dude. Yeah, but all the, that the, functional the, patterns, I uh, train smart, bitch. Go, go out there. You know what I'm saying, boy? <laughs> you need to get your ass there. Come down to City Boy MMA. Show you some real <laughs> work. Real you know, because there's a real motherfucking middleweight <laughs> coming for all y'all. <laughs> But nah, um, if we're going like the thing, the thing about it is, uh, uh Johnny Elon, I was called the nigga Austin. <laughs> he just does it. He does it pro. He he poses the same problems that the last man that Gegard Musasi just beat the shit out of Austin Vanderford poses to him. And man, Musasi made it look easy, and that's because. It's not that they're like, I, not to take anything away from, from guys like Johnny or Austin, but when you're kind of predictable like that, you're like a white boy wrestler who's got decent striking and power in your hands. Dude, that's damn near. That's like 80% of MMA fighters across every single yeah, weight class. You look generic, buddy. Not even that you look generic. It's an easy It's scout. just like, There's nothing really to prepare when for. you're not, exactly. When you're not like, when we know, okay, 
one uh one two a double leg and maybe a real strong overhand you're not presenting flying knees spinning back elbows when like that's not in the back of my mind like i gotta worry about you throwing some real dynamic hellacious like gonna hurt me type shit it's a very it's easy for me to get prepared for because i know what's coming to me and we're talking about Gegard Mousasi, a man that fought Mark Hunt, a man that he's fought Mark Hunt, Melvin Manhoff, um, Uriah Hall, Tim Kennedy, Chris Weidman. Dude has fought Vitor Belfort. And even in the, even who just fought that uh, one, that one real good uh, Rafael. Before he ever um, even made in it into even the UFC. That, we're talking about on his tail end now, though, after everything you just mentioned. Now we're having a whole nother version of this man. It's almost like. Like a rebirth. Like this guy looks better right now. You want to say he's forty? Uh, I think he's on the on the tail end of thirty. I think he's he's okay. not. I don't think he's forty yet. You, you know, but the fact of the matter is, Gegard Mousasi has had had three different Hall of Fame careers right. before the UFC, right. the UFC, and now yeah, in Bellator. That's what I'm saying. He looks fucking uh, as good, if not better, than I've ever seen him right now. And like, the crazy his, thing his, about his it is, version. he gets it done everywhere. He his does price. it like he's not a striker. He's not a grappler. Yeah. He's like, minus two fifty in this fight. Yeah. As the fave, am I hearing that's a lock? Yeah, that is that's a lock. Boy, <laughs> I mean, hey, if Johnny gets his shit done. Respect. <laughs> More, yeah. Honestly, I will <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I no, will eat no, everything no, I've said. No, no I'm like, telling you, no, 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 no. You like want to know what Pat's really thinking in his mind? If Johnny gets that win, <laughs> I'm the Bellator champ. <laughs> That's what Pat Downey is thinking right now. So he wants Johnny to get that done. <laughs> oh, trust, trust me, I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm, a fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm still in the developmental stage. Let me just get a fight under my belt first. <laughs> and I'll start talking that woo. All right. Hey, bro, this is the time. Right. <laughs> this is the time to start let talking that woo-woo. Let, let me show the world I can actually do you down with the You with the woo? Let me show them with the shit, all right? Let me show them. Oh, there's yeah. going to be some people that don't fuck with me and Pat no more after this one. Yeah, we might have made some enemies. <laughs> all right, moving on. We we got a couple fights I want to go over in the UFC this weekend prior to the 276 card. I want to get your guys' opinion real quick before we jump off here. So... Neil Magny versus Shavkat Rachmanov. I'm going to look into the camera right now and tell everyone here that I believe, I truly believe Shavkat is a better fighter than, uh, than Hamzat. I believe that Shavkat is a better fighter than Hamzat. I believe that Hamzat has way more hype around him. And it also is, uh, it's the best way to say, it. I, I think he cares more about the hype and, and becoming a big name and, I think that Shavkat is just a savage, bro. So I just think he's like, at the retirement fund on Shavkat. So here's the thing. Shavkat oh, no, is a... No, 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 sir. The yeah. sunglasses are coming off for this one. I'm going to look in the camera, too. Because everyone's hype on this dude, Shavkat. And I am, too. What, Like you just said, I think he could be better than Hamzat. But, bro, Neil Magny is that dude. Like, when Neil Magny is put in these positions... When he's put in that, yo, nigga, you, we're bringing you in to get your ass whoop type of position, he pulls it out. Every time Neil Magny's been in this kind of position where it's like, yo, we need you to take this L, you might, you know what I mean? So what, what, give me an example. Like, what do you, because he, he fought Chiesa, he lost the decision. He fought Santiago, he got knocked out in the fourth round. He fought RDA, he got subbed in the first round. Like, he's, he's beaten. Jeff Neal, Max Griffin, but he didn't look that's, good against Max Griffin in that first that's, round. And see, that's what I'm kind of getting at. Is like I feel like when the uh, the Jeff Neal fight happened, that was a fight that was supposed to prepare propel Jeff Neal. Right, right. And same thing with Max Griffin. Like Neil Magny is the dude that they put up against someone that's supposed like this is supposed to be that big marquee win. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, when he goes up against some of like the the bigger names, he loses. He's a gatekeeper. But it's some of these guys that get they, that they match up with Neil Magny a little bit too fast. And we'll see, man. Like you said, I, and I agree. I think Shav, Shavkat is very, very um, skilled. I think he's super talented. But I think Neil Magny is, like, if there's a, uh, a dog to take on this card that might actually win you some like some real money i think magni might be it but how does he win that how does he win this fight because i just don't see a decision. path to victory a decision boring boring with decision. what though because grappling against him is dangerous it might be but like and pat can tell you this 
a dude that has decided that I'm going to anti grapple, like I'm gonna win this, I'm gonna win this fight by not fighting you, is on can almost be worse than fighting someone that's just that much more skilled than you. Because you can lose a you can lose a fight to someone that's not even as good as you if their whole game plan is to just win that fight without fighting. And I, I feel like that's that is we're finally seeing like the the age where that style is becoming a little bit more obsolete. But I think that's Neil's only way. Here's here's all I have to say here, okay? Shavkat right now is a minus four forty favorite. I'm not I'm not laying that type of juice in a fight, period. But here's what I will say on the flip side. You can take Shavkat to get a submission win at plus four twenty. Okay? Against a guy in Neil Magny who has been submitted before by RDA and and Damian Maya. And I, I will say this: this will that'll prove Shabkat where he is is that in my opinion. So. Yeah, but here's the thing, bro. If I'm looking at just the value of it, Shavkat right. in his last three fights has two submissions, and Neil Magny has been submitted twice. I get it's by high level guys, but plus four twenty, I can get on a submission. Oh, I think no, that I Shavkat could rock him on the feet. And then get a rear naked choke on the ground or an arm bar or something. I just feel like there's tons of value there. If you wanted to take Shavkat inside the distance, the minus 150 bet, meaning that he's got to get a finish one way or another within those three rounds, that's something that attracts me a little bit. But if you think he could beat Neil Magny in a decision, that's plus 275. So what do you think about that? Because that's not bad odds at all. This, is not, this might sound funny, but now that I really think about it, after what you said, I think if this was Hamzat, I'd be a little bit, I'd be way, way more. Um, you think Magni would have a better shot? Yes. Why? Be because just to go back to what you said, and I'm thinking about, and I'm, I'm thinking about it as uh, we're sitting here talking. It's like you, you're right. Shockvat is not the kind of guy that would like look at Neil Magni and be like, "Oh, I'm gonna whoop his ass." Yeah. Like Shockvat is that, or Shavkat, whatever the hell, whatever the hell he pronounced his name. That's the kind of dude that he sees Neil Magny and he's like, I prepare to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, he's preparing for everything. You know what I mean? Like, he's not, he's not going in there thinking, like, I'm just going to whoop his ass no matter what. And I think that's what Hamza would kind of do with a guy like Magny. I think he'd yeah. go in there and just kind of think he was going to win. And that's how Magny would probably, if he was going to win. So, I, I mean, I'm not trying to reverse my pick, but I definitely, like, in my opinion, with a, with Magni being a, as big a dog as he is, it's worth something to sprinkle a little bit something on him because I don't see a world in which this is a completely unwinnable fight for him. Yeah, I don't know, bro. I, I just think that this is there's just levels at the end of the day. And when I saw him struggle with Max Griffin, you know, struggle against Jeff Neal, Iesa, obviously, you know, was able to just wait how big how big is shop got like uh size wise height height wise he is six foot one 170 Ooh. bro i just I, I i can Harden. see this so clear right now okay i'm calling this right now shavkat is gonna choke him out in the second round and it plus 420 on a submission i can just visualize it right now it happens all right, Neil Magny wants to go to home to his newborn son. <laughs> he hasn't prepared for this fight. Shavkat is in straight kill mode. I believe that he is such a dark horse in this division. The dude's 15 and 0. I get he only has out three fights in the UFC. But when I watch this guy fight, I'm just like, holy shit. I don't think he has any weaknesses. I really don't. I'll give it to you, Matt. And on that, I mean, they don't do this, but I would even say. Like, I don't know why, but I see if he's going to get him with anything, I feel like it's going to be a front face lock, some type of front face lock choke, because Magni shoots a lot, and when he does, he leaves his neck very open. I think it'd be like some type of ninja choke or a Dars. I can see it. All right, one other fight in this card, then we'll wrap up. What do you think about Umar, Nurmega Madoff versus Nate Menez? What do you like in this fight? Oh, man. Because Nate's a huge dog. Let me, hold on, let me pull up the odds first. Right now, and this is crazy. Umar is a minus eleven hundred favorite. Going back to the Russian last name, whenever someone has a Russian last name, the odds are like crazy inflated. It seems like. 
100%. Dude, when your last name is Nurmagomedov, you're going to have that inflated odds. Yeah, because he was like minus 700, and now a day later he's minus 1,100. I mean, that's ridiculous. Um, Umar, another guy I trained with at AKA, man. He's a, he's a killer, bro. Killer. I would arguably say that Umar, out of all the guys that I, I trained with pretty much every all of that entire team, um, while I was there, and I would arguably say that Umar is like the most talented out of all of them. Um, and saying that though, man, Nate Manis is a he's a really really tough cat. Like that's a very very good um matchup in my opinion. And honestly, I think that's like uh, that's kind of like when um in my opinion, it's kind of like when they matched up T-Bow with Habib back in the day and. Everyone says that are that T Bow arguably beat Habib. I think I could honestly see something very similar to that going down. Where like I don't think enough people know an, uh, about Nate Manis because I want to say he's like what from Wales or something like that. Like he's from uh, Europe, and um, he's just not one of those guys that's talked about. Like that thirty five division is so stacked. Insane. It's one of like it. It I think it might have caught up to the fifty five division as far as like how stacked that division is. And with so many killers, like Nate Manis is one of those guys that's just kind of flown under the radar. But for me, I think he's a he's a very very skilled opponent. I think he he definitely brings the uh, the the fight to to Umar in this one. He's a huge dog, so if you like if you like want to take a, a chance on him at six to one odd, definitely there for him. You guys look at this fight, uh, Sabah with uh, May. I saw Sabah's fighting, but I don't know who he's fighting. Mendoza? Mendoza? Brazilian dude. Ah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I would think Sabah's going to win this. I would hope Bellator's giving him the layup. Really? He needs it? Um, I want to say he's like 1-2 and two or 1-3 in, in his last three or four. Really? Yeah. He's had a rough run lately. But he's been fighting some of the best. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not touching that fight. All right, let's wrap up with a quick parlay on the fight night card. Fight night parlay. Give me your 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 favorite pick. They're gonna edit out that weird like silence of us just kind of sitting yeah, there yeah. Like, looking at <laughs> each other. All right, good, because that was not that was not it. Yeah, Pat, over here, Pat over here on Instagram <laughs> stories, <laughs> slide in those DMs while we on the podcast. We can't even have no no real no structure here. Come on now, Pat. Come on, man. Yeah. All right, I'm putting. My attention spans only an hour. I saw that shit hit sixty. Six, six, six. <laughs> six minutes. Hey, we having fun over here. I got a wood to roll. I got a. <laughs> I got another highlight. I got some fried chicken. Boy, we need to go grab another highlight. Somewhere. All right, give me, give me your one, give me your one play on this fight night card. I'm throwing in Rockman on money line. I don't care how expensive it is. What's the fight night card this weekend? Yeah, Umar and Nate, Chris Curtis is on it. Uh, What's the odds uh, for the TJ Give me, give me that Russian sounding mug. Your Yeah, give me a minus eleven hundred, bro. Yo, what's oh, yeah. the uh, what's yeah. the odds on the TJ Brown fight? Uh, Minus eleven hundred. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I don't even see it on. You got a bet eleven hundred dollars. Uh, I right, scratch it. We're not. We're not doing the part. Right? No. Oh, that's an impromptu. Yeah. Still though, take those two bets. The oh, Russian sounding guys. Yeah. When you see if you see a minus Russian eleven hundred, <laughs> he's probably gonna win. If you see a Russian name on the card, take that name. 